Okay, now before we run the EVGA P55 Classified 200 on LN2, we need to do the Clarkdale cold bug slash cold boot bug modification on the motherboard. It usually helps with the cold temperatures with the Clarkdale CPU. So you can move, let's say, the cold boot bug and the cold bug 40 to 50 degrees colder. So before the modification, your Clarkdale CPU might have a cold boot bug at like minus 90 and after the modification minus 140. So it's definitely needed. I don't know if it affects the Linfield CPUs like the i5-750, the i7-860 and the 875K, but I think it's safe to do the modification now before starting to do any like LN2 stuff on the motherboard. It's much easier to do it now before the whole motherboard is insulated and everything as the modification point is near the CPU in the socket area over there. So uh, from the CPUs I now tested, I have one very good i7-875K and I found one pretty interesting i3-550. But it's very hard to reach the maximum uh, base clocks with a motherboard like this. So you probably need the Gigabyte H55, the lower end motherboard for the best possible frequencies with the i3-550. Uh, but we can try the CPU like anyways and see what's the maximum base clock for this motherboard. The highest base clock that has ever been done on this board model is uh, 300 by Sniper Oz from Australia. So we'll see what happens. So the modification point is over there. A lot of the stuff that uh, was posted about this uh, like whole platform and the CPUs is uh, gone or at least the images are now gone as for example the Kimping Cooling Forum is down. Many of the images at Extreme Systems and Hardwarebot.org they are gone as the links are probably like expired or the images don't exist anymore on the third party image upload websites like uh, like image shack whatever they are many of those images are now gone but i managed to find the modification at overclockaholics it was posted by shannon i think and uh, it's pretty simple it's the same thing on other boards as well from other vendors so here you see that small black component over there and there are four resistors on the vrm side of that component and I think four resistors and one MLCC on this on the CPU side of the thing. So we have to short the center one, so the third resistor from that row. So we need to short the middle one over there. You can use a wire or just conductive ink or the solder. The easiest way, if you ask me, is just to short the component with standard solder so it doesn't uh, get in the way when you start to insulate the motherboard, like adding Vaseline, Armaflex insulation foam and so, uh, and so on. So when you just short the component with solder, it takes the least amount of space, but you can use a wire if you wish and other stuff. The resistance of that component is 0.75 kilo ohms, so it should drop to zero. So I'll do the thing or the work of camera because it's much easier and then we can just look at the end result, but it should work just fine. It shouldn't harm the overclocking uh, potential and the use of the board with a Linfield CPU like the i7-860. So yeah, so let's see what happens. And okay, that's pretty much it. So it doesn't actually even uh, harm if you accidentally remove the component, if you just short it because when, when you short a component like that, it's pretty much the same thing as no resistor remaining at all. I tested the board and it seems to work fine. So now I will start with the extreme overclocking power with this board. But yeah, that's the, just to save this information, if some of you managed to obtain this motherboard, this is the modification you need to do if you want to run at least the Clarkdale based CPUs on LN2. So yeah, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching one of my videos once again, and I will see you on the next one.